Disclaimer, before watching this video, please check out my Spotlight On video of Halo SPV3, as this is covering the next version of that game and some of the things that I didn't get to cover in the original video. Click the card in the corner to get taken straight to it. Also, for this video, I am using a pre-release beta version provided to me by the developers, so any glitches or anomalies you might spot should be gone by the time you get to play. Around a year ago, I discovered the fan remake of the original Halo, known as SPV3. An amazing fan creation with new features, expanded levels, improved graphics, and so much more. It was so good I made a spotlight on of the game, and thankfully because of that, I was kindly invited by the developers to try out SPV3.2 before release. Thank you to them for letting me try out the next step of their amazing remake early, and enjoy all the new content they have created, including new weapons, further improved graphics, and even completely new levels. This is Halo SPV3.2. Let's start off with what SPV3 was already providing. This is a mod of the original Halo Combat Evolved for PC from 2003. Every single level has been spruced up graphically, expanded with new areas, and the gameplay has been updated and improved. So, what does this new version do? Well, it builds on all of those things to bring an even more complete package that is unlike any other mod I have ever played. First off, there's the presentation improvements. The game can now display native 4K resolution, and as such, some of the assets, such as the guns and HUD display, have been changed to show this off. I unfortunately do not have a 4K monitor or a PC that can run that, but you can still see the differences when running at 1080p. Gun models look even better, with extra details really popping out. The Master Chief's helmet visor now has a textured pattern to it when you see it in cutscenes and in gameplay and his overall character model looks a lot better as well. Comparing this to the official Halo remaster, you can really see how dedicated this team is. You can also play with a visor in your HUD display, which is a nice attention to detail, but not personally something I use, so thankfully you can turn it off in the options. Speaking of the options, the developers have given a good level of control over graphical settings even down to little details such as removing the letterbox bars and chapter prompts. You can also change the field of view, so if the gun does look a little too close to you, don't worry, I'm just kind of weird and I prefer it that way. Overall, the big update to this version though is lighting. It has been drastically improved. Of course, this is still a mod of the original game, so some things are not updated yet and probably can't be but I imagine after a few more releases, this game will end up looking even more incredible than it already does. And in many areas, this already overtakes the official remake from 2011. This is a big improvement over the first release of SPV3 as well. Levels have been upgraded again with what appears to be improvements to some textures and color palettes. The new lighting may just be changing the way the world looks. But overall, the game just looks a lot more colourful and bright. My favourite change though is the final level, The Moor. This level is genuinely freaky at times due to how low the lighting is. Your torch barely cuts through the darkness, only to reveal the horror of the flood. And with how maze-like the level already was, navigating around it is even more tense than the original release. There are also new music tracks, all from the SPV3 composers. Some of these tracks were in the previous release, but I would like to point out my favourite track from the composers. The epic title screen music. This sets the tone for the game and is one of the best renditions of the Halo theme out there. Something I didn't mention in my previous video was the difficulty changes. Things appear to be ramped up for SPV3, and this new version seems to take it even further. The Flood in particular were insane. The development team informed me that no more enemies have been added, but the number of the proper Flood, you know, these little bastards, have been increased. There are so many enemies on screen, it becomes insanely overwhelming at times. 
with you constantly having to fire, reload and switch weapons basically without stopping. The final level benefits from this greatly, with the tight corridors and low lighting creating an incredible atmosphere for an already impressive level. To top it off, the Flood have been made more intelligent. The Flood infect all in Halo. Humans, elites, grunts, brutes and more. In the original game, the Flood would mainly just charge at you, with the occasional enemy with a gun. In SBV3 though, they have different tactics based on what species that they used to be. Humans will generally stick to long range and more tactical positions to take you down. Brutes are more traditional and will just charge at you like the original Flood, and the Elites will use cover and have overshields, which they actually wait to recharge before attacking you again. Thankfully, the Grunt versions of the Flood are not quite as explosive as they once were. In the original Halo, they were basically a walking frag grenade. Here though, they don't do as much damage as they used to and they will push you back, then release more Popper Flood than the original but they won't kill you instantly like they used to. I did notice a difference in this game with the Flood, but I couldn't quite put my finger on what it was. Thankfully, after speaking with one of the developers, they informed me of all the changes they've made to the Flood. This is another great example of the effort that is going into this mod. I also found out while playing through this release that some levels even have alternative routes or events. For example, level 1 of the Pillar of Autumn, I mentioned in my previous video, has a no gravity section. On playing through this time, that section didn't happen and I was worried it had been removed. Turns out, after asking the developers, if you keep the marines alive, the gravity stays normal and things play out quite differently. This is impressive crafting of the level adding unique changes that you can experience by playing levels multiple times. This was present in the last version, but it just goes to show how much there is to discover in this incredible fan remake. Speaking of things to discover, the team has gone even further than a remake with this release. This time there is not only alternative remakes of levels such as the Silent Cartographer, but entirely new levels that even change the story slightly. In the main campaign there is a new level called None Left Behind, it's based on the second level of the game, but it is set after you've released the Flood. The world is covered in spores, it's swamped with the Flood and Covenant, the sky is a dark moody red, and everything is just a lot more apocalyptic than before. It's a great level that shows what the Flood has done to Halo. You need to find your way to some human survivors and fight your way to a pelican to escape. This then takes you on to a new level, the Commander. This level is even better than None Left Behind and is very ambitious. Based on the Silent Cartographer level, you play as the Arbiter from Halo 2, complete with Beam Sword. The first Halo you couldn't use these weapons, they weren't introduced until Halo 2. But amazingly, the development team has not only managed to get them working in this game, but to improve on them as well. The weapon is now in place of an armor mod so it is always in your arsenal, but not taking up your second weapon slot. In order to not make it overpowered, the sword has a time limit of around 15 to 20 seconds before needing to recharge for around a minute before being usable again. This makes the weapon much more balanced than it is in the official Halo games. And by removing the homing or lunge ability, it means you must get up close and personal in order to use it. It got me out of many a tight spot in this level, and the sheer amount of flood that you take on makes it invaluable at times. Of course, there's more to the level than just the beam sword. The elites are a proud race of the Covenant, and as such will not use human weapons. This was a great attention to detail and really changed how I had to take on the level. I generally favour the human weapons in the Halo series, so this level was a very new experience for me. Sticking with needlers, plasma rifles, plasma pistols, carbines and more to take on the Covenant and the Flood. There are some impressive set pieces and even a boss battle at the end of the level, all tying in nicely story-wise to the destruction of Halo. To top all of this off, there is even two versions of the level, the evolved version and the standard. Both offer a different take on the level, with varying stories, world layouts and themes to the whole level. Beyond this, there's not much more to discuss. Oh, except the fact that there is another three level campaign following a new character on a different world, filled with more new weapons, another armor mod and some amazing set pieces. This is known as the Lemuria campaign. 
This is a remake of a mod made by another team that has been hugely popular in the Halo modding scene. I've never played it before, so all of this is entirely new to me. You play as a female Spartan known as May, who escaped the fall of Reach with a few other humans and even an orbital dropshock trooper, more commonly known as an ODST. This extra campaign was pretty damn incredible. Entirely new areas, new guns such as a new pistol, a plasma rifle that you have to manually cool down, and a scopeless battle rifle. My personal favourite is the amazing new needler grenades that explode with a flurry of needles when thrown and even stick to enemies. These things are awesome and were a highlight amongst an already amazing campaign. The story is really interesting as well, with a whole new set of characters and a new scenario involving an anonymous voice called the Guardian. Since I was playing the beta build, the voice acting and some of the extra story aspects, such as the logs, were not available to test out, with only placeholder voices and blank panels being available. If these panels can live up to the ones in the main campaign though, then we're in for a treat. I actually read through a lot more of these this time playing, and they are brilliantly written. My favourite is on the level Keys, where you have to find your former captain and save him. You find logs around the ship of him recording the thoughts he is having as he is infected by the Flood, as his mind is read for useful information to find Earth and a way off of Halo. To anyone looking to play through SPV3, I urge you to take the time to read these, as they are amazingly written and really add to the world, especially the scale of the Flood and the threat that they pose. Overall, SPV3.2 is exactly what it needed to be, an improvement over the previous version. The amount of content in this game is truly incredible at this point, and I can only imagine it getting better with further releases. This game has more content, despite multiplayer, than any other Halo I've played. It has been great getting to speak with the developers of the game and hear some of the plans they have for the future, and to hear some insight on the game's development. With this being a beta build of the release, I of course ran into some hilarious glitches, such as an invisible SMG with an infinite clip size, or seeing where some animations weren't quite finished yet. But what was also interesting is I got to hear why these issues happened and see them get fixed with further releases. Also, thanks to the impressive new launcher for the game, it has become a lot easier and painless to get this game up and running. I can't wait to see what the future holds for this impressive fan remake and this team of developers. If you enjoyed the original or any of the Halo games, this is the ultimate Halo experience. I cannot urge Halo fans enough to play this. You will not be disappointed. Since 343 took over the Halo franchise, a lot of fans have felt the series has lost what made it special. With what I have seen from the SPV3 team though, it is clear that there are talented developers out there who can bring that Halo magic back that we all felt when we first played it in 2001. Whether they eventually get hired to do this officially with 343 and Microsoft, or they carry on with their own fan projects, I know that the future looks good for what this team can bring to the table, and that even if not from official sources, thankfully, the Halo franchise is in good hands. Halo, it's finished. No, I think we're just getting started. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Phil, I was the creator of this video. Once again, I would like to say a huge thank you to the SPV3 developers for allowing me to play this amazing game early. Honestly, thanks to them, my love for Halo is bigger than ever. It is also incredible to be offered this chance due to my previous video, so thank you very much for allowing me to try the game out early. If you would like to play the new version yourself, the download should be available within the next month. I will add a link in the description when it becomes available. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button, subscribe for more videos, and share to really help the channel grow. Our social media pages are available in the description below. And if you have any questions about my time with Halo SPV3, please drop a comment below. Of course, as always, there are more videos on screen now. Until the next video, everyone, thank you very much for watching.